meeting of the Board of Planning Council to order. If you would please send an invitation to remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance to the Faith in the Second Our God, we thank you for the beauty of this day, the glory of your handiwork that we've been a part of and made enjoy. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to serve our community and for these that serve along beside us. We thank you, O oh God, for living in a land like America. We ask that as you bless those as less fortunate than we are, that you will bless our service people that serve us in the uniform of our nation. We ask tonight that all things we do and every liberation that we undertake will be decent in order and keeping in your will in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Pledge, salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To the council again, this is our second opportunity to use our mics and they sound like they're working right now. But uh, please make sure that, that everyone has their own and and uh, we'll, we'll uh, we won't have to do this in a while. I hope these nice words we don't have to worry about pulling the other ones forward to the table. Uh, you've had the opportunity to uh, for your minutes and your consent agenda. Is there any item on the consent agenda that one of the council would like to have pulled off for further discussion? If not, I'm sure we're going to a motion to accept the consent agenda. I make the motion to accept the consent agenda. We have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? I vote to call Yes. Carter? Yes. Carter? Yes. And Chair of the Kids. We're glad tonight to have Mr. Ted Everett with us. Uh, I suppose it was probably about the week of Christmas or in that holiday time. I stopped by Ted's office and, uh, and, and said we're about to have this meeting. Some things he will share with us, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you his, his presentation. But uh, shortly after that, things began to work quickly with, uh, I'm sure that even though we're way over here, uh, miles away from the intersection, everybody's familiar with the activities going on Highway 79 to South Carolina, South of the Interstate, and Dixie Ferry Road, some areas like that. And Ted has been very involved with that. Uh, he said if we would call him after the first of the year, he would come in and talk to us. My my thoughts to Ted just just briefly, I don't even think I sat down there. I think we just kind of bumped into each other, sort of thing almost. Was uh, <clears throat> we, we're just going to have 77 through here. Why we don't know that's going to bring more traffic, but the, the, the likelihood that the reason it's being pulled out is because there's fixing to be more traffic in the future 20 years or something. We may wind up with some residual lands in some place, or maybe some properties that become available to us. And uh, almost every store, we just went to Lake Placid last week and on down as far as the market there. There's some big places we went to Ocala, we went to Bellevue and places like that, but there's some small places out there too. And almost every one of them has a phrase, the Dollar General, the Standard Dollar, uh, Hitchcock, or it was it Hitchcock? That's what I think it was, like the Hitchcock Market Grocery Store. Our community needs a, a grocery store. It needs a, at least a small line grocery store. I don't know what's out there. But I believe that anyone like can help all across Ted Everett can. And uh, with, that, with that introduction, Ted, uh, would, you, would you please let us and the Chamber of Commerce become partners some way. Well, the first thing that I noticed on your agenda that I would like to uh, go to first, what is the DEO grant opportunity that you're seeking? We're not, it's just the information on it. We want to know what it is. Uh, is this a technical assistance grant? Yes. Okay. What would be the uh, use of the technical assistance grant? Wait. Madam Clerk, that's on your presentation. I'm not sure that. And I may be well, just Mr. Ahead, but the reason I want to talk about that. Yeah. Um, Which way you want to go with? Uh, I think that uh, was it Mr. Falk last month that made us talk to us about the DEO grant. He talked about CBDG. Yeah, CBDG. But uh, I talked to him about this DEO, and he didn't know if it was right for us or not. We don't because we don't have any projects that we need the technical assistance on right now. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and, and you may you may change our mind. Well if you're me, familiar with the that grant, tell us about it. Let me let me let me suggest this. Through the project seventy nine 
it's, it, it's an interesting trajectory when you become a chamber director because you know nothing when you come into that door. And you know nothing about economic development, or at least I did. I watched Tommy McDonald. Tommy was a good friend and a good mentor. And I thought he had the coolest job because he was always playing golf and he was always talking to the big wigs in Tallahassee on the golf course. I said, that's a pretty cool job. <laughs> but uh, what I have learned over the 12 years is that it's about relationships more than it is about anything else. And uh, the one relationship that I have tried to forge and I think fairly successful is one with uh, DEO and, and the fact that uh, before I go and write any technical assistance grant, or have, I should say, Ken Shaw write any technical assistance grant, or even before we wrote anything for Project 79, I got my team together and I talked to Sherry Spires, who is my good trip person at video, and she and her team handle those technical assistance grants. And what I have found is that uh, they like kind of be in the loop from the get-go as to what you're thinking about. And when I say that, I'll tell you about a grant that uh, Karen Shaw is getting ready to submit to uh, uh, DEO and it's a technical assistance grant and it is based on the fact that uh, years ago, Enterprise Florida was, was paying a service to a guy named Victor Leo. And Victor Leo has become a good friend. He is a very smart individual and he owns Leo uh, Sites and Designs out of Louisiana. And basically they hired him, Enterprise Florida, which is another arm of PEO, kind of like Cousins, uh, to go into all the rural counties in the state of Florida and take a 50,000 foot shot in all the rural counties and try to look at possible sites that could be used for economic development. Now he's done that in Washington County and I'll leave this information with you as I've got it on my computer. And he came up with these sites that have now been graded by the Economic Development Council and sent back to uh, him and now EFI has got the uh, five identified sites that we would like to look at first for Washington County. Unfortunately for the new city of Wausau, there's neither a site in Wausau and there's only one in there. Now, there's a reason for that. And uh, the, the truth is, is that when you're looking at sites, you're trying to find key areas where you have a lot of traffic count, where you have good quarters of transportation. So we all know our county, and we all know that uh, two quarters of the 77 and I-10 and the 79 I-10, that's a quarter. There's another place in Washington County that I suspect and I've always believed that at some point, Ebro, at the intersection of 79 and Highway 20, is going to be a huge intersection for Washington County. And I, and, I, and I say this because it's already been proved years ago when Lewis Bear came to me and said we want to find a site in the road to set up their distribution plant. They had several distribution plants west of the road and they wanted to consolidate those two distribution centers into one center, which is why they came to either. Now, remember when Lewis Bear came, that's been a long time. They were thinking ahead of the game. And they knew that by locating in the Ebro area close to 20 and 79, that they could take that product here, that they could move it north and south and east and west. So it became a hub for them. Radius wise, they can reach all of their major clients. And that's what businesses such as distribution centers are looking for. They're looking to have a major intersection or some form of, of a transportation system where they can go to all four points of the compass and get there relatively easily. There's already been studies done in DOT, we hear about, that they're starting to just look at the idea of a wide highway 20. And that is going to happen at some point. 
the traffic count on Highway 20 is continuing to grow, and at some point, the DOT has to look at that and say, is this road built for this much traffic? And the answer at some point is going to be no. And that's when they will widen it, much like they're doing here on 77 and 79. So, it's, it's, it's really hard to tell the good folks at Wausau that you are in an ideal place at this point in time. If I told you that, I would not be representing the truth. And no one would know that. And we have to come to terms with reality and look at what options we might have and what creation of options of opportunities we can do in the future. And I think, to a degree, there are some opportunities once the four lane is done. Nobody is really going to be looking at anything until that four lane is completed unless you're up around the I-10 because you're looking at the traffic counts not only in I-10 but the traffic counts in 77. And I will tell you that if you look at Tallahassee and you look at Pensacola and you look at the traffic counts, Shipley and Bonifay exit are about the lowest traffic counts on I-10. And it just makes it's reasonable. When you're leaving Tallahassee, you're going west or east and you're looking for your pull-off to go to your subdivision or wherever you live. And it is a fact, and this is a, this is a discussion we have with a lot of site consultants that we're trying, trying to talk to and show them the uh, northwest Florida areas. But several years ago, they didn't believe the people in Washington County, Holmes County, Jackson County, rural counties would drive an hour for a good job. They just didn't want to believe that because they're looking at urban areas where you might drive 30 minutes to get five miles. But they just didn't think that the good people in Washington County and other rural counties would drive an hour to an hour and a half for a good job. We know that's, you know that's not true. Many people in this community travel outside of this community for jobs. We export more jobs to surrounding counties than we have people working in this county population wise. So when you see the four lane happening all the way to the beaches, here's what you can predict based on the traffic counts. 79 will most likely and all will probably have the higher traffic count than 77. And the reason that's going to be so is because, think about this. I'm a visual guy. So you got 231 over here. 77 and 79. And think of the end users of these roads. If you're going down 231, you're going to Mexico Beach, Port St. Jet. You're typically not going to go down 231 and drive all the way over the desk. That doesn't make sense. If you look at 77, you're looking at an artery that Jeff uses all the time to go to Panama City. So you're going to Panama City, you're typically on 77. Downtown, Panama City Beach, maybe Port St. Joe, but you're serving that, that community. 79 on the other hand takes you and you can go east to Panama City Beaches, or you can go west all the way to Destin. And then of course over here you have 331. Washington County is fortunate to have two four lanes happening to the beaches. So we're collectively going to get most of the traffic. But when you look at the traffic counts, imagine this. Tourists come from the Midwest, Tennessee, Alabama, to these beaches. And I can testify to this because I get a lot of business from those states during hunting season. I'll tell you what I see firsthand. The people that are coming to my place are vacationing down here. I look at their license plates when they come to my place. Ohio, Tennessee, all these places. So the Midwest, they're going east and west, south, east, west, south, south. 77, 79 are fun. That's what they are to all these states and us. And uh, so 79 of Destin and San Destin and Rosemary and Watercolor and all those places are very attractive to those people. So they're going to be coming down 79 because they can get to all of their locations. 77 have a 
lot of traffic too, but it probably won't have as much as I may not. But there's going to be opportunities, and you're going to think I'm crazy, but it may be so. They got to be on the tractor too long. When you see, remember guys, and remember when you were kids and you crossed the Florida State line? Remember you went to the little towns and you saw Florida? Do you remember that? You had your stores that were colored like Florida. You had people that were stopping and shopping. Look at 231 with that place in the middle of nowhere that's selling bigger jaws, Kathy, orange marmalade, flip flops. Where do you see that anymore? You know, because it's gone. But people will stop for things like that. Because they haven't seen it. You and I grew up with it. When my dad brought me to Chippy Florida as a little kid, we crossed that line. It was the first stop was the local station and get some good old Florida orange juice. And you could get three or four of those cups and they wouldn't charge it. <laughs> that was good for a family of four kids. <laughs> so it's not the kind of economic development that we would want to uh, see in, 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 in the communities, but we want to see something like what the mayor just said, Dollar General Store. And they have a niche. They find these communities like yours, and they bring services that these small communities need. They can survive in the smaller areas because of how they market and what they have than they could in the bigger areas, because the Dollar General is just not going to survive as well as a Target or somewhere else in a more municipal area. It's, it's two different ways of seeing business. So, most of your jobs are going to come, we hope, back into Washington County through economic development of some of these sites. Now, the county is in the process of repurchasing the uh, industrial park in Chip. That will be a 70-acre park that has got a new road into it, water, sewer, natural gas, two utility companies go through that property. And as we know from past, we can actually bring a rail spur into that. But I cannot market that because it's not county owned yet. It would be illegal for me to market a piece of property that we don't have under control. So if the county purchases that property, I will be submitting that site to all the leads that come in with the right kind of leads. 77 and I 10 in the city of Chipley and worse and sewage. I know y'all have been reading about that. Spray fields are, are a big issue because what happens is that the city is found out is that if you don't have good spray fields, you can't put water out there as much as you want because it won't percolate. North of Chipley, south of Chipley, is not good perkable property. Guess who's got good perkable property? Russell. It's saying a little cold. It's 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 got potential. <coughs> so going back and making the uh, complete circle about DEO, spray fields, and things like that, and the grant that uh, we are writing to submit to DEO is. I saw these sites that the state had uh, paid for. This work was paid for by the state. I want to incorporate this. I went to Sherry Spires and uh, said, Sherry, we want to talk to you about a potential grant. And so she goes, okay, bring, bring me one over here. And she had her six staffers there. And I, Don Evans, Sean Lewis, Sherry Barton, Sherry Spires. And I know these people now because we go over there quite a bit to try to get money. And I suggested that we want to do a technical assistance grant that would show where is the best places to run water and sewer to these sites, number one. How do we get water and sewer there? Like in the case of Ebro, there's no package plant down there. They have well water, that's it. You are not going to track any sizable company without water and sewer, especially in that area because now sitting on the water management district, I can tell you that that's a very sensitive area to water management because you have curse formations underneath the ground. And curse formations are basically monoblock. And things drip right through them. And so 
they don't want septic tanks because septic tanks have nitrates in it, and nitrates get into the aquifer, and the water management district doesn't like that because we are charged, and the governor told me personally this one when I interviewed with him, he says, the quality of water is everything in the state of Florida, Ted. Your job, if you get appointed, is to make sure that you and the rest of the board protect the quality of water in the state of Florida, or we have nothing. We don't have anything. So we try to do that. But we need to figure out a way to have water sewers down here. So within that grant of just doing what I asked them to do, I also asked them, in the grant, should we get it, I want a study done to find a centralized water collection point. And possibly down the road, and you have to think years down the road, that Shipley, Vernon, potentially Ebro, potentially Wausau, can take their water to one location so that we can dispose of the water and not every five years like the city is finding out, the city of Chipley is that they don't have any more capacity in their spray field and growth stops. Growth comes to a stop. So, in, 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 in BDC's way of thinking is we're looking for long-term solutions to problems that we see and if we don't correct, we're going to be dealing with again and again and again. What the state has told me is we don't want to have Washington County or other counties or communities to come to us every five years and want to check for more land to expand spray fields. They don't want it. They want communities and counties to find long-term solutions so when they stroke a check, they don't worry about us coming back to them in a couple of years and saying we need more money. They don't want that. They want long-term logical solutions. So, every all the information I saw today in an email from Victor's company, they got the last bit of information that we needed from Victor's company to finish the completion of that grant. I'll probably be reviewing that grant with Ken Shaw and Victor next week to make sure that we go through the entire verbiage and make sure it's exactly what we want. The other thing that I learned from talking to the DEO, Sherry Spires, is that they told me, they said, Ted, you know about planning grants? I said, yeah, I know. Most of the time when you get a planning grant, it goes on the shelf in one of those cabinets or sits in the planning and zoning office. And Roger, you know this, there's many studies that have been done at that county that are in the bookshelves. They said, maybe. They, they said, what we really would like is to see some action on this if we were to give you the grant in the money. I said, make it a little bit more. And that's what I put in the grant. Is that if we get this opportunity, if we get the grant, and the studies are done, that the county commissioners will then include that in the comprehensive plan under Schedule H of the comprehensive plan. And that way, it doesn't matter who's elected in the future, that component has to be looked at and money put into it so that the county has a 10-year plan of growing out infrastructure. And it could be, and I don't know, it could be that somewhere around here we're going to find a couple hundred acres, 500 acres near Wausau or between Vernon and Wausau that could become that collection point. And then the county might have an opportunity to get into the utility business by taking all of this uh, reclaim water, spray through the water, and bring it to that area. It's not, as I look at it, not every, not every municipality is, is going to get a slice of cheesecake. But if the county overall can increase the opportunities of bringing in bigger companies, then our citizens may not have to drive to Bay County. They may not have to drive to Jackson County. They may not have to drive to Holmes County. We can bring our workforce home because here's what happens when the workforce leaves the county. Mrs. Carter goes to Bay County. She's got a job down there. Ms. Carter gets paid. Ms. Carter buys her gas down there. Ms. Carter probably buys her groceries down there. She spends a large part of her check 
in another county. That is typical. Statistics show that. Is that if you're going to buy and trade, usually in the place where you get your paycheck. We want to bring that money home with jobs. But we cannot create jobs without a foundation. And the foundation, as I have come to believe in wholeheartedly, is finding places to bring in the water and sewer and the key areas that are going to catch the site developer's attention. So a site developer is two years from the time they identify a site to the time they build on the site. It's typically a two-year period of time. We're already <coughs> marketing some of the 77 and 10 and the, one of the components that we have in Project 79 and, and the authority that will be voted on by the two county commissioners and the city of Montefiore is a marketing arm in it. So that when we have water and sewage from Montefiore through Holmes County down into Washington County, we will have a marketing element that that authority can then start spending money on reaching these site developers and saying, here's where we are. And we have water and sewage. And we have our own quasi-government. We have our own planning and zones that have to go through the authority and then be passed on to whatever entity that land is in, whether it be the city, by Fay, Holmes County, Washington County. There is no short-term fix for making economic development happen. I use the analogy that building your economic development foundation is much like building a house. If you do not have a good slab, if you have not prepared the ground to hold that slab, if you have not done the basics like having water and sewage where that slab is, you're not going to have anything. It's, it's, it's really simple. It's a good analogy because we have to, in my opinion, make sure that we are investing in infrastructure first and then the site developers will find us and the businesses will come after that. But if you're trying to sell to a developer that 300 acres that's nothing more than a cow field, I'm going to tell you, they'll be in their car and they'll be out of your town quicker than you can say spit. Because there's, there's nothing for them. You would have to bring the water and sewage to there, and that takes time, especially in small counties like Washington County that don't have deep pockets. You're relying on the grant process, and you've got to put in lift stations. It's a long-term process. But if you show a developer that you've got a 300-acre field that's got water and sewage, all the lift stations in place, tax abatement available to the county, and good infrastructure to that site, good internet, they look at that like, okay, well, we really don't have to do a whole lot to develop that site. Who do we sign with? What is the county going to give us? Is the land free? And most of the times those companies expect the land to be free or paid for by the county. That's the game. It's not a very fun game, but that's the way the game is played because the truth of the matter is, is that when I see a lead, comes to Washington County, at the very top, it shows you what states other than Florida they're looking at. And those are usually anywhere from five, six, ten. <coughs> so now you, you think about, okay, I'm Washington County, one of 62 counties in the state of Florida, and I'm competing with five more states with all of their counties. You see where I'm going with this? It's a game of competition. And states want jobs so bad that they're willing to make concessions. I know too, uh, a year ago in that session, you heard the Speaker of the House wanting to do away with, and, you know, incentives from the state of Florida. Uh, they say, you know, because we don't have an income tax, that's one of the best incentives, and it is. But you go to South Carolina, South Carolina has Boeing, Mercedes, uh, other big companies that have come in the last 15 years along the I-85 quarter. And that's because they're giving the land away, they're giving them cash incentives to come there, and, and they've created billions of dollars of capital investment South Carolina has, along with thousands of high-paying technical jobs. Because they were willing to say, we'll take public taxpayers' money and give it to the companies to get them there so that they can take South Carolina and move them to the top of the list of the site 
consultants to look at. So this is the game that we had to play. Washington County needs water, sewage, and key places in the county so that we can start standing out away from Jackson County and Holmes County. Yes, we're in business with Holmes County and Bob Faith for Project 79. This is a win, win, win situation. And I don't mind sharing that with uh, Holmes County and Bob Faith because I know what we're getting out of it. We're getting water and sewage for the first time in the history of Washington County on the west side of the county. And it goes all the way down to a cook store to Douglas Ferry Road. That's a huge intersection because Douglas Ferry Road, if you look at the, if you look at the radius of family homes around Douglas Ferry Road, it's got more than around Chippewa. That's huge. I don't ever thought that until we did the studies. So my way of thinking is you bring that main trunk line down to Douglas Ferry Road, everything will start filling in between Bonifay, I-10, and Douglas Ferry Road, and at some point, the developers are going to say, wow, I need to put our apartment complex here on Douglas Ferry Road. Now, we can tee off and go east and west down Douglas Ferry Road. You see how we're laying it out? Bring the trunk line down, and then start teeing off, and you have more growth. And I look at the map, and I see Wausau. Wausau is a good community, but you have to wait until the four lane to really see where you're going to be at that point in time. If I can tell you right now that I have things lined up for Wausau, I'll be telling you, I will be telling you the truth. But when it's four lane, I can tell you what I've already seen. Our, our dwelling permits are up. We are now almost above where we were in 2007-2008 when the recession happened. And interestingly enough, there's more stick-built homes being built in Washington County now than mobile home permits being pulled. Think about that. Probably the first time ever. In a long time. And guess where they're coming from? I looked at the statistics this afternoon when I got back from water management. Most of them are coming from Bay County. And guess where they're coming? They're coming this area right here right here because they still won't have access to their publics and what they have down there but they like the cheap land in washington county and they can build more homes from above in washington county than they can and they can and they will get just up here but the point is is that i can see that if the trend continues wausau in the area around Wausau, you may begin to see an uptick in more homes being built in this area. Uh, people that are retired, that are selling their houses and their lives for a lot of money in Bay County, and buying more property and a bigger house up here. That's the trips. That's what I see happening. Um, DEO, back to the original conversation. I stand by to assist you in any way if you have an idea for a DEO technical assistance grant, come to me. I'll set up appointments with you guys with Sherry Fires and DEO. And let's go and talk to them first and say, here's our thought process. What say you? And they will tell you. They will tell you what they think. And by having that conversation early, I have found you might actually hear something if you're paying attention that will help you on that grant. Write it the way they're looking for, or they may tell you that's not really going to work. And then you save yourself a lot of time and a lot of anxiety knowing that you're writing something for, you know, that you're not going to be writing something for nothing. Have a conversation with the people that are going to be looking at your grants first and ask them a lot of questions and thank them profusely for seeing you because they're your friends. They told me. Ted, we like the fact that you come first and talk rather than just getting it in the mail. And uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. So as far as the Chamber and the Chamber of Economic Development Council, I will help you in any way possible to set up these meetings, go with you to with these meetings. Karen Shaw is the grant writer from the county. Use Karen. She's there for all of the communities. And let's take advantage of the strengths that we have and the friendships and the relationships that we had in Tallahassee. The reason we got that first million dollars from the state was because 
we had talked to Brad Drake and Senator Gaynor and others before we even applied for the money. We had taken them to the hospital, both of them, individually, showed them our studies, laid out the plan, told them how the authority was going to be created. We gave them everything so that either they were going to be behind us or they weren't. And they stood behind us. And I saw the governor's list of uh, vetoes that first year. Veto, 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 Project 79, check. Veto, 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 veto. And there was a lot of money that was vetoed out of that budget. And Senator Gaynor and Representative Brad Drake, they, they were able to work it through the legislative process and get us our first million dollars and then the $1.82 million that we got from the governor came from a totally different fund. And there was no legislators involved in that. All we had to do was show the state where we were with the project, how far we come, and we're closely through Opportunity Florida that had ties with the governor's office and the governor did do to us. He had $85 million that the legislative uh, had given him. It was his money. He's got $85 million that he's not going to be around to spend next year, but the next government will go. And if you've got a project, if you've got a rural infrastructure funding project, tell them, we'll, we'll have to break the grant for it. You're not alone in this, and I know you sometimes feel like you're alone because you're far away from the annex and, and, and the city of Chile, but you're not alone. I've known these two people for a very long time, and I think that they will tell you that if you ask me, I will help you in any way I can. Don't go alone, people. You, you, you've got a resource in, in myself, and you've got a good county commission. You've got a uh, grant writer who knows what she's doing and really writing some excellent grants. Let's find a project to do. If you want to do something with infrastructure, there's over $2 million. And this is a, this is a disagreement we have with the uh, legislators because rural gets typically the short of the stick because of all those 62 counties, we got 36, 36 of the rural. And our population base doesn't even come close to matching what Miami is. You've got more legislators in one square mile in Miami than you will have in these rural counties combined. But uh, we are making headway in, in the legislature through governmental, governmental affairs, and I will help you in any way I can. I promise you. Just find me a good project, and we'll help you write it. An opportunity for which the county belongs to, has ability to help you as well and so it's just a matter of finding the right project and and, and, and going to town hassing and talking to the people first before you even put a word or a letter on a piece of paper that's going to go to town hassing now we're more than happy to answer any questions you may have on any any topic no, most times <laughs> <laughs> Any way from the council have a question for Mr. Everett? Mama? By the way, the slash pad grant, kudos. <laughs> kudos, man. That's great. You're going to be fired, I think. You know, I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking the next possible festival and seeing those kids playing and playing that splash pad. And if you could figure out a way after four lane to bring more, more nightly entertainment down there on the weekends, you might capture some of that traffic. Because people go down there in three days, they're burnt like a lobster. They, you know, I went to Vernon one time. Don't put this on paper, anybody. <laughs> I went to Vernon and asked them one time, I said, guys, you got a great asset here, it's called the creek. I said, you know, you've got that little boat ramp there that you're fighting with the canoe livery, when that gets all sh shook out, go and write a grant and build yourself a nice little you know, 300, 400 amphitheater next to the creek and make some trails down the creek. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, as much as you don't like people coming into your community or sharing your assets, sometimes it's like the creek down in Vernon. That's a major asset that I think is not being used to its best ability. But that's just my thought. And we just can't move the creek over the wall so I wish we could. I wish we could. But, but, but that's, that's what I would say.
say is that when the four lane is done, and I'm not trying to put some on them. I understand, you know, this has been their creek forever. I understand. But at the end of the day, if you want money, and you want other people's money, you got to have something for other people to spend their money on. Or they going right next, down the road to the next stop. But they feel welcome to spend their money. I'm, I'm serious about the, uh, I really think if you're going to write a grant, come to me and let me set up a meeting and let's get you in front of DEF because they want that relationship. They are much better at giving out money to people they know. If they know about your project, I'm not just saying they're just going to give it to you because they, they like you or they know you. But you know what I'm saying? It's like anything else in life. It's personal relationships and it's coming to that. If you're going to ask your daddy for some money, you better have a reason why you're asking your daddy for money first instead of just saying, give me 10. <laughs> so, we stand by the help. We'll assist in any way possible. I want to leave you these maps here and uh, let's show you where Victor saw the best sites in Washington County. <coughs> that technical assistance grant hopefully will show somewhere in the middle of the county a good place to collect uh, the, um, the great order, as you call it. Uh, and at some point, it'd be nice to have all the municipalities putting pipe into one area. It makes sense. If you're going to build a county, build it smart, lay the groundwork for long-term growth, or you won't get anything at all. If no one has, let me uh, separate plants to tell you. Appreciate it so much, you Chairman. That's my pleasure. Thank you. It's been, it's been a little I, I think you've come maybe a couple of times over the years, and I know that uh, Mr. McDonald came many years ago and basically told the same thing you did in, in Morse Hall and, and uh, Ebro in particular, material. Uh, it's, 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 it's time of having sewer is, is going to be, is going to be one of the first two or three steps of anything of, of kind of uh, Talk about Mr. Carter, uh, he's been with us about six months now. I, I kind of think you got maybe, a good man here. I, I think he may be looking for a place around Walsall to move through all that. Find somebody to make a deal. I think, I think he's he good man. We, we think so. Uh, I, I think when I bumped into you, uh, it been some discussion among the council and uh, between my wife and me in particular, we, we when we travel with six and things, and uh, and I think I wanted you to be Santa Claus or a, or a mm -hmm. magician come out here and pull something out of it. Would you I wish I could. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I was wanting, not not thinking you could, but that's what I was wanting. And you've addressed kind of on a broader sense economic development. Right. That may not be, that may not have been the question that I should have asked you. Mm -hmm. I think our concern and the people in town that I hear ask us anything is, why can't we have a whatever phrase or something like that. Yeah. And uh, I see the one down there on Sunny Hills. They're not even incorporated. They, they, they sit on the side of the road down there and it's always busy. I, I, I had if there was one sitting down here where this vacant building is, it would always be busy because our people quit going to to Sunny Hills they'd build our own dollar store if they had one, you know, right close by. So I think probably I was wanting you to tell us maybe in in uh, uh, how we can create some commercial opportunity. We talk about economic development, right? and that usually relates to jobs. Mm -hmm. Nothing that would come here right now is going to produce a loss of jobs, probably. Mm -hmm. It's going to be more services provided to our community, to our, to our citizens, to our electors. Uh, we hear two things. I think the council does. I do sometimes. Why can't you get us something? And then the next thing I hear them say is, we won't walk on the street with like these. We will work well. and, and just yeah. don't worry that way. You can't have both of them. If we're gonna have something here, then then change the park. If we had a if we had an industry right around here, then fast foods would pop up, some more junior stores would pop up, and, uh, and then somebody could get in here and we'll be going to the alcoholic beverage ordinance yeah. things again. And, and so that, that, so we need to we need to be sure that we want something mm -hmm. before we ask for it. Uh, and we need to we need to channel that and help it help it do what it wants to. Uh, so with that with that said, is there a way that you can teach us or something to well, us? I don't know how, 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 how do I know how do I know how do I know how to get in touch with the Dollar General sort of Well, I can I can I can get you that information. And of course, um, Dollar General typically 
typically does a better than economic developers. Here we go. Yeah, and they, 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 can, they can see what they do. Here's, and, and this is different from like a Publix. Publix are, are looking for a lot more land. They're looking, their niche is totally different from the Dollar General store. Mm -hmm. All right, there's actually more population in Sunny Hills than there is in the town of Wausau, based on the statistics. The statistics. Um, that little store was closed for a while, and it's reopened. Then, of course, the Dollar Store came in. That mother store closed down. Dollar General came in, and uh, the reason that Jim Town told me was because it matched their criteria of where they wanted to be on 77. They knew they were far enough from shipping. They knew they were far away enough from Bay County that they would get all the in-between traffic, including Wausau. Mm -hmm. That's why they chose where they did. Mm -hmm. Because being in that location, they could pull from all sides. Where if they necessarily came up here, they're competing more directly with the chipping stores and those grocery stores in Walmart. And they want to be able to pull in people from Greenhead because people from Greenhead are going to the beaches. So they, 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 have, a, they have a formula of where they put it, like Kerryville. And to be honest with you, that blew me away. Yeah. I mean, because I'm going to be honest with you, yeah. I, 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 I scratched my head and said, they, do they understand what the flood zone looks like down over there? It's a wonderful store. I, I but I they had to build it up on foundation. They did. They did. It was a great store. If you have a unique, just drive to here for some time. Just, just be and, and, and where they're located is they can attract all those rural people within which about five be, to ten miles of the region. That's Maybe it. So they found their niches to be where the big stores aren't. Yeah. I had a lady call me a couple weeks ago, and she wanted a grocery store in Greenhead. And I told her, and she'd already talked to Brickyard Market, and I've talked to Brickyard Market quite a bit. I know the, I know them, Kevin and, 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 and Ricky Treadwell. I know them very well. And uh, I told her, I said, it's a matter of demographics. For a Brickyard Market to set up shop in Greenhead, they would be out of business in a half a year. There's no way they can do the volume that they need to stay open and hire employees in Greenhead. And this lady was adamant. Well, we, everybody's going to go there. And this is the same argument I've heard from Cracker Barrel. If Cracker Barrel was here, I'd go there every day. Well, there ain't no way you go to Cracker Barrel every day. And the point is, is that Cracker Barrel has this one. We've talked to them. Cracker Barrel wants to be on intersections, but if you look at Cracker Barrels, unless they're in municipal areas, there's one in Tallahassee. Where's the next one going? If you're going down west of the interstate, where's the next one? They like to be far in between because if they're far in between, their name, their brand is going to get them that business. Now there's one being built, I think it's on 23rd Street. Yeah. And it will be a success. And it's going to, it's going to be a success. Because of that cracker barrel being down there, they'll see one up here anytime soon. Because part of their, part of what they want is the name itself is something. And they're not going to dilute their own market by having cracker barrels everywhere. Because then if if you've got a cracker barrel everywhere, where's the luster? I mean, where's the shine on the name? It becomes commonplace. When you're going by a cracker barrel on my 10 and you like cracker barrel, you're going to stop at cracker barrel. That's right. <laughs> and if there was a cracker barrel at every other interstate, you ain't going to stop at cracker barrel because, oh, huh, they're there. Yeah. That's, that's the reality of marketing. And that's a good illustration. We've had our vacation on the cracker barrel trade. <laughs> Infrastructure first. Find out what your weaknesses are in infrastructure and address that first. Nothing's going to happen without water and sewer. I call it the king and the queen of any economic development. Because
because they're not coming, they're not coming to Wausau without water and sewage. Water and sewage gets you better ISO ratings, which is fire, your fire station, because now you have pipes to put out fires. So you have to, and again, I go back to that analogy. If you build a house on a wooden, uh, wooden floor or just dirt, you ain't got much of a house. If you build a house on a slab that's got pipes coming up to it, you're going to have a house. And it's going to stand the test of time. But I would certainly say to the city council is find out where your weaknesses are and let's start closing the gap on those. Because if you can bring more of sewer, you can expand it anywhere, if you bring it down 77, and see, you, know, you may have an opportunity now to be starting to write some of these study grants. See, you want to do study grants first in some ways to make sure that, here's what I do with these sites. I knew since the state funded that work, I, I knew the state funded that work. So once I get that grant, if I get that grant, and we do that study, and it shows me that right there, this is where you need to bring water sewage and this is how you should do it. Then I'll use that grant plus the fact that the state paid for that study and I'll write a grant for that money and I'll use the state's own studies paid for the state is my emphasis and my reason of asking for the money and I'll say that you, you paid for that. You acknowledge that that's a good site. I want to bring water sewage to that site. I don't have to do my own research. They do that for me. So, would I'll you do this for us? Be glad. Uh, if if you if you get an inquiry, mm -hmm. or or if there's something that we can pursue as a lead, if you get an inquiry, and I know that even in the smaller stores, there's a difference between a abandoned dollar and a dollar general. Yes, there is. And there's a different. There's a different uh, level of yeah. quality or whatever. Uh, but if you if if you get an inquiry, if you get something that would fit, well, so we do have wood. We don't have sewer. Right, we're going good. Our ISO now is a six and a not six bad. and seven or something like that. If we got a good ISO, if you get a lead or an inquiry, would you put us in touch with those of course. With those people? And or I'll or tell you, if something comes across your desk, would you call us and say, of, "Hey, of, of course, you this. of course." And the other thing is, we're we're very soon to complete a new economic development website. So if the city has some land, or you know, we'll contact the realtors. If we can put it on our website, we'll be glad to market not only Wausau, but the entire county. That's, that's what we're trying to get with this new website, is to be able to have site developers come and not literally check the website, but go directly to the Washington County EDC website to get all the demographics of all the communities, all the available land that we have, controlled by the city and or the county, show them where our infrastructure is. But right now, guys, now's the time to start thinking about where can we extend our water lines? Where can we extend them? And how do we address the sewage issue? Because I will say this down the road, the state of Florida, and I don't want any more septic tanks, guys. They don't want us to be having the central system and put on that's where, that's, that's where I think. When Mr. Morris was the manager of the chief, he asked him mm -hmm. one time, and, and he had ideas then that perhaps could have had chiefly. And, and, yeah, and, right. and maybe even extend it in a short St. Hills. I have told the city of Chipley many times, I said, you know what? You may think it's crazy, but if you had enough property around Boston or somewhere down here, and it would cost a lot of money, but if you could show the state that that site would take your reclaimed water for a 15 to 20 year period, you will get that grant. No, we won't. Yes, you will. Because now you've told the state I've got a solution, a long-term solution. No more short-term solutions. They don't want that. They, they just give the money out and they're going to give you it every five years. That, does that make economic sense? It doesn't. Find a long-term solution and then they'll work with you because you'll get better points on that grant. So, whatever y'all want to do, you call me. I'm here. I'm, I'm not the chip economic development guy. I am the Washington County even a fellow guy, so I'll work with anybody, you know. And we are members. Yes, yes, but I'm going to do this. I, 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 I do things for non-members because it's the right thing to do. Uh, we are saying, I know you, uh, and we are saying. Can't turn anybody down. And we are going to do it if, if there's an opportunity. Now would be the time. Well, folks don't know that the Senator Gannon was yes, a member of the class of 
1961 high school. He, yes. He didn't register there. So he, he's probably, he's in there for, for, for another couple of years. Brad's going to probably, he's got four more years. you got the right people in the right job. You mean Patron? Our neighbor. Oh, you got the neighbor trucks. Yeah. And then you will have, hopefully, Mr. Scott. And I know that Bill Nelson's been here. Yeah, well, and that's going to be an interesting race. But I will say this, from what I observed about uh, Mr. Scott, that man likes to work. He likes to work. He reminds me a lot of Jeb Bush that puts in 14 to 16 hours a day. And he's all about job creation. And not the least of those kid and kid that we have. Well, I, look, <laughs> I, I will tell you this, at, at the end of the day, when I finally go to the house, I just hope that I've, I've been able to do something that's going to be beneficial to the people that I don't even know in this county and uh, just be able to go to the house and get on the track and say, I did my time well. That's One last I'm thing I'll ask you, and I think you were the organizer of it, 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 it didn't happen but a year or so ago, there was going to be a meeting of all the municipalities with the PCC. We, and this is what we, I think, here's, here's the issue is we wanted to do what I, and we had it with the city and the county and the school board, and we have discussed bringing that back with all the municipalities. It would have to be where we go to the PAC because they can handle that. You have to start with the quorum so you can do a workshop first. And we want to have a discussion with all the municipalities and the county. And I don't think at this meeting necessarily with the school board, but I think, and I've talked to Trey about this, the problem is you got not enough time to get it all done. Yeah. But I will tell you that I will go back to Trey and tell them that it's time to bring the counties back in. And by the way, we are realigning our economic development through the executive committee of the chamber and in not too distant future i'm sure i'll be coming to you and saying give me a liaison to the economic development council so that you will have a seat on that you won't be able to vote because some of the things we may take up you might have to vote on in wausau but we want you to be a part of that so you hear what's going on in the county and i just am waiting for probably one more meeting of the uh, of the chamber to get what I need done, and then I'll be coming to you and say, give me a person. Ebro, give me a person. Here you go, give me a person. So that we have all the municipalities represented in our EDC. That's a goal that I've been working on for the last year and a half, because I knew that we needed to have y'all hearing what we're doing and getting information from y'all so that we know what your concerns are. Anybody else have anything for the council? To those of you in the audience, uh, Mr. Uh, Avery is the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce. I think most of you know that. And, and sometimes speaking in in, uh, in acronyms, DEO, that he referred to me many times tonight as the Department of Economic Opportunity. That's uh, the state level for economic development, uh, some financing. And That's our Department of Commerce. So that you know, at least you don't know the way to wonder what DEO is. Yeah. Any parting words, sir? No, it's a pleasure to be down here. Looking forward to the hottest day of the year coming up. Yes. Yeah. If you see me running through the splash pad, I'll be I'll be looking for that. But uh, again, I'm going to leave this information okay. to you. And um, if you have any questions, anything, call me. I'll be calm. And invite your chef sometime if you like. Thank you very I'm much. Glad to Thank you. Okay, Mr. Uh, Hunter, did you have anything for? Uh, I'm good okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, we talked right now. Okay, yeah. well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Call yes. Good to see you. Thank you. Always good to see you. Yeah. So. Thank you for the invitation. It's always good to see y'all. And y'all do a great job on the Pasta Festival. And what is it, election year this year? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's great. Uh, when I go home to Augusta, of course, Augusta has grown quite large. And my sisters, they live in municipalities. And I don't. I don't think they really quite understand uh, why I love it down here so much. But I will tell you, just from somebody that grew up in Augusta and lived in other places, big towns, there's nothing like watching a parade going through a community or watching the Possum Festival, the Watermelon Festival. And the people that help each other as neighbors, you just don't find it anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's a good place. That's America is a year. It's red, white, and blue. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you again. very much. Thank you. Have you're welcome to stay with me. You. You're scheduled much. Y'all have a good meeting. Thank you. Uh, Tony, is not. No, but I have this information. Okay. Uh, we have got the back page up down there, and Tony's going to put up a pole barn 
to mount that back page with lights and all. Uh, we got an estimate of $3,000 for the materials, uh, 5300 installed. I think we can probably beat that material price and all. But he just want permission to go forward and get quotes on getting a pole barn. Uh, so we already got a back page up down there. You want to see oh, what we need? Yes. I basically put it over. They want that cover it where they can do it at night or do it in inclement weather and whatever. You know. Yeah. But where do we get food from? Maybe. I think for the summer. Yeah, we, we got that one out there for a lot less than that. And the teammates, you know, we can make for a special group here for the. But I think we can beat that price, you know. Are you, are you aware of that? Are you going to comment on the revision? Seems to me like a good idea. The check, where's the check? Is that where behind the, is that behind the uh, home play area? Where, where's the back? No, the back, no, back the page is at the park. Oh, 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 that's part of the table. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all we'll do is just kind of cover it. Tin top? Yeah. And put some more increases to it, but I got an electrical donated. Okay. I, I think, again, if we get into so much time, and I think that probably would be in your spending if we can't go to the if we want to get close. Uh, well, I, I think we can, yeah, that, that's how it runs. <clears throat> okay. What's the pleasure council? Uh, we could probably go, uh, we could probably lose the more we can get. Pre written quotes or forward and take the better one if we want to do it, or we can, well, can, come, back, or we can come back here next month and vote on it. Well, that would be it. Really season, season, yeah. Yeah. season about to be up with four men. Oh, we get quotes from Hannah on Salvage in Bombay, Circles and Salvage, and mm -hmm. Chipley. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, what's the one after CBE is? Backwoods? Backwoods, yeah. Backwoods. Back yeah. Anybody know about that? Can she get she can she can can she get quotes from those other three places and and us agree tonight for her to do the lower quote? Not you, you can do it at five thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. So so we already know that we've got one that's less than five thousand. I, I know we don't have one to me, but since we've discussed a a client a, a bidder or or a provider's quote, if you wouldn't put that into that number, in the fact that it gives an unfair advantage to somebody else. Thank you. Uh, what, what do you think? Can we do that? We can do that. Uh, is this, is this getting the prisoners to do the work? Yeah, prisoners are going to do the work. We can't afford the labor on the council. What's the treasurer's council? I think we should do it. Okay. I'm not bad at it. I can talk about it. Okay. All right. Then, uh, uh, should we have kind of motion to that fate? Did you make a motion? Oh, yeah, I'll make a motion. We've got a motion to get the bid, do the, uh, the load. Is there a second? I'll second. Got a second. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Ms. Ratenberg? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I didn't. I didn't ask you. You, you, you thought I was asking you for another question. I know. I'm sorry. Ms. Palmer? Yes. Ms. Hart? Yes. I'm sure it is. Okay. All right. Uh, Anyone in the audience? Yeah, I don't see any names. No. Okay. All right. Mr. Clerk? We have in your packet a proposal from John Warren for a website service. And I can tell you all, I've talked to many people, and this is cheapest I've seen mm -hmm. for what we need, which is a total of $1,675. Uh, 50 percent due when we sign the contract. The remainder 50 percent due at the end of the contract. Website for what Roger asked me last month to come to have some information on the website. The city check that the city of Chippewa has and all that is outrageous. I mean, it's like fifteen thousand dollars you know, for a website. You know, we don't have that. What's your name? Uh, nine ninety five a month and eleven eleven dollars for ten years to look. Yeah, he waived that you know, for the first year. For the first year, mm -hmm. you know. You're right on there. This is for you. Keep on going forward. We'll get your dream part up there. 
Right. <coughs> and there's a couple of things before that you need to do. Mm -hmm. okay. You get professional service agreement between the town and the town. Can you send it? I'm just going to be for the first time. And this is, you know, this is, we didn't get this information until this week. Like I got it Tuesday. So that's and why. We do not have to handle it tonight. We just. No, this is for you. We've been on the website for probably three years. Yeah, it is. And I just. And I'm looking at it. Up. He's doing the one for 10 no, minutes, you know. Just, you know. I have to spend the website to put us out there, get us known. Yes, if, if somebody said that wall song, wouldn't that be possible? That's cool. Yeah, yeah, get rid of it. We can also put our meetings on there, our agenda. Our ordinance, our code enforcement, our animal people, control, charter. People in the community can, without having to come to the city hall and for that kind of DI warning, they can look at that thing. We have a sign and kind of that. I'm not I'm not either. I had asked the same question. And the state of Florida likes us to have a website to tell us that our budget's up there. I mean, that's an ordinance. I think I lost my email and my, my web posting. Well, can we, in case there is something, and, and I know John, he's done some work for me uh, a couple of times, just uh, got some movers out of mine at one time or another. And but, uh, time to look over. I was just thinking, can we just put this as a table and, and you go on next month and get everybody a chance to read it? Who wants to read it? And you give Mr. Carver a chance to look at it as well. And you can, I know you, you will be here, but you can talk about it. Is that good, Luke? Welcome to the table. I also have pictures in your packet to the parade of George Waters Court. I call with uh, Matt with Tony Bell to come in with West Main and a couple of pictures before that. But his suggestion, because he's seen the pictures and all, is to go ahead and use one of our cleanup days and utilize that for his two dumpsters out there, put them at the park. And uh, he wanted to decide on the date. The best time for us will be the 14th through the uh, 18th of May, where we can send it out in the water bills to be able to. And what they'll take, they'll take everything, but uh, we got the city of Malone's flyer that we'll put in the water bills of what they will take and what they won't take. You know, they'll take stoves and stuff like washers and dryers, but they won't take refrigerators, freezers, stuff like that, you know. And, but there's a list, so we'll send that out. And also, uh, we can get a special inmate crew. If our we tell our citizens to put it on the right way, inmate crew will be by to pick it up. If it's not on the right way, we can't get it. One day, with an inmate? 14th of May, 18th of May, Monday. 14th of Monday, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. They suggested a week simply because we're, we're picking it up ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Because they say if you, that's the best way to do it, according to Mr. <coughs> Bell, because if you get into everybody bringing something out there, you know, telling what's thrown in there or anything else. And well, can anybody go out and throw something else out there? No, we're going to start. So that's my next thing I want to talk to you about. We need to put a walkthrough gate out there for those that want to come in and skate, but we also we need to lock those big drive through gates at night. And weekends, you know. When I'm not sure until we start having all of them. I guess we could walk through the big gates between the wild day and. Somebody's right there. Right the, the only thing that's usable out there is it, the skate park and. Like I said, we've got a big table. Well, we've got a big table out to them. But uh, outside of that, we're, the ball fields and right, the, the bathroom and and the concession stand all that's inoperable. And if it has, I had nobody there in the pile in the bag, but if it has, the first thing you do is go over to where you want to help your, your toilets from going to be cherry bomb or something else that'd be broken. So or nothing else, just to put a gate, you know, to limit the access of that. Yeah. Just to limit the access of that hill. You know, we could put a gate on each side of that hill. Because we have to let AT&T in there, because they're tile side. If it goes down in the middle of the night, they got to get in there. When I asked Sam about burning this, I'd gone out 
looked at it. He sent me these pictures of that. I was completely surprised, amazed, because that furniture stuff was in there. That happened in the last two, three, four, five days. That's I went out the first few years, like in the holidays, and begin to ask him about it. And uh, that's happened. That's happened in the last two months. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought I'd been ready to meet her, but I don't drive up to a concession because I'm ready to fix it up before they. So that's just random, random people going in there. That, that the somebody goes in tonight, I got a burn, and goes behind that debris pile. That debris, debris pile probably was generated by us. By us. Yeah. The, 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 the limbs and all. It's actually burned out there. The fire department burned that. The vegetables, the debris. You drive right behind that house there, right behind that, right there, right behind that right there, no, 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 there's the planters. Is there a pot? No, there's no pots yeah, in there. So it's right, now, right now, right now, it's all going to go to waste management. You know? Right now, if we stop it, we will have to deal with the free on or some things like that. That's the reason they want to take freezers and mm -hmm. everything, and, and they'll go to that washing machine. Why couldn't the fire department burn all of that, and then whatever's left, like of the frames or whatever, then put waste management and pick up? I mean, are we having to pay extra for the cleanup day? No, no, no. It's in our contract. We got four years in our contract. Oh, okay. We got those prices. And, and DEP will let us, we'll let you burn anything with the bishop in the room. Oh, okay. <laughs> we got a well out there. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. For that, if y'all will be good with the 14th through the 18th for our spring cleanup. And then, and then that flyer just added in there that if anybody's helped to call the uh, uh, Councilman Carter and Attorney Carter, and they will be glad to come and have them later. That won't be for kicking. So we just come here and put the gate up soon. We'll go ahead and put the gate up soon. What we we'll do is just limit the access up that hill. Meantime, somebody's going to probably do some more. Where are you talking about? 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 Where are you This is where you can go and look at it. We're, we're going to get right in here somewhere and put a gate, limit the access up that hill, and give Sam and them key of that. You know, yeah. We could probably put a 12, 15, 12, 14 foot gate right there and leave it all access up that hill, but we can't go down here or here. You don't think you can come up there? Uh, I think so. Okay. It's going to be pretty simple. Look at, look at it because you may want to come across pinks, here. Our fence is right here. Where you're working most of the time. See the fence is right here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere where it's not there. Where it's not there. That's something you can do. Is that good? They're probably going to the fence. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, it looks like we may have had some arterial rain to try to get a drive through our holding ponds. You know, we got a. Foggy. We got a lot of drainage. That was designed in the bottom of those that we don't want to mess up. We, I do suggest that we lock those gates morning and afternoon. You know, leave them out here today if they want us, you know. Oh. Uh, and provide a walkthrough gate if they want to go after hours in there. The drainage is in that one pond. Yeah, the it's, the it's, it's, it's just amazing what it took to get that one pond approved so that we didn't put up Pioneer Road and all those other things. Okay. Right. Uh, we're going to discuss the EO. The only other thing I have is if you notice in your financials, our balances are low in all of our accounts, mostly due to oh, the fire department, you know, having to have this and this and this, you know. Um, but, and we had to loan $11,000 to the fire department to make their payment. We just need to, everybody be aware that we need to, you know, not any not essential, you know, we're not going to be in trouble, but we don't want to get to where we were a few years ago. We got about forty-one thousand dollars worth of payments coming up in the next in this few years. We're good at the fire department. Several years ago, a few years ago. Yeah, BJ, you know, he's a mayor then. He stopped from any expenditures except for what was absolutely necessary. To offer the They're not going to have that payment this year. You know, they're not. Going to I have a little one there. That twelve thousand five hundred. We're going to have something in there. It's just you know. We just like 
anything that's not an emergency, expend a tear, you know, a, a large amount, you know, the pole barn, that's not going to hurt us, but, you know, we got a $15,000 water payment coming up September 1st. We got a $36,000, $3,600 fire truck payment coming up September 1st. And we still haven't paid for an audit this year. Why would we, uh, I'm assuming it's probably do anything that's not necessarily any part of the fire department. I would, I would be spending a million. It's not, it's not necessary or designated. What would the fire department spend that was necessary? It was necessary. They had necessary spending tires, you know, getting that one brush truck up, that you went up. It took a lot of money to do that, you know, to get it running. The one we covered with water, it wasn't going to affect our solution. Mm -hmm. But it did. And I'll have uh, budget versus expenses next month, and y'all so have where y'all can see where we're And a lot of them. And, 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 and in water, you know, we had the uh, raising the level of the tank, you know, just unexpected expenditures this year that we haven't had before. Plus, we got a land payment and a truck payment, you know, that we got. Also, we can make it in the bill, okay? Oh, yeah, we'll make it in the bill, okay? We just don't need to go frivolous on anything. You know? Not that we do anyway, but, you know, just... We, if they can do without tires, it's told, we get these payments made. They can do without tires, so we get these payments made. If we can do without... Uh, uh, anything, so we get these payments made, you know? We may have just been coming to it when you came to the board. I know that our, our council first was new. If it had them just a few years ago, it was almost at the point of... Uh, state of critical concern mm -hmm. and when that happens that actually can come in and start taking over our boots and things mm -hmm. like that. There's a process I know and, and but it does put us in a very precarious situation with the state and with our finances and with our holders. And I thought and we, we managed ourselves out, managed ourselves out and on my head I don't want to get back in that direction. Have you talked to, to Sam and he knows kind of what we are? Yes, I've talked to Sam. I've talked to Sam and I've talked to Jim Bell and all. You know, we don't need to do anything. We don't have to. That's all I have. Is everybody getting the water bill? Yes. Where have you got the water bill? No, 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 no. They're playing with their law. You know, that's what we have. Yeah. 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 Y
you don't do it in the prior way. That's one of the most sensitive issues that I deal with with the county and here. If we were together in a meeting, it's a, it's a meeting. But there's some limited things to charge people that are here out of it. The client the attorney things and law shows, but outside of that, anything else? When we call it cash, it's got to be undertaken. When anything has this body is other on property, that doesn't need it can't happen off to the side. If we had a personnel director, if we had some other things in place that work in this kind of piece so they can remain chastised, hire and fire, and things like that. But here, we do. And as long as we, it's like the county, I think the best thing that the county ever could have done, and maybe they have moved that way more than the last few years. When we sit up here and hire Mr. Smith's son, then I have to explain to Mr. Jones why he's hired his son. Now, personnel people take an application, new qualification, and hire this person. That's what the city of Perryville's done. Be, be <laughs> color line, be, be gender line, be everything. Just get the person that can do the job. And then when somebody calls can't do it, they will have to hire him. That's what the city of Perryville's done. They've turned their personnel over to the court because they needed to hire somebody that was a member. A uh, family member of the of the yeah. council member. So it so it's Washington County. That's how they've got you know somebody in there that's kin to one of the commissioners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they turned their iron and fire over to the administrator and then carried them to the clerk because they they have they want to out of it. And that is. I'm not uh, that needs to be done blindly too. If we turn it over to that one, I don't need to come down and say, you can hire this with this one. You don't need to do that. So that may be something that we think about. That we, and and Margaret won't quit when we do that. <laughs> when, we turn, when we turn it over to her to hire and fire her to manage and all. Because when, when we have an employee that don't do like we like, we're not going to do that employee. We're going to go to Margaret. And then and we're gonna to have to fire more because she didn't fire somebody else. And I, I, don't, I don't know where they're at, but I'm sensitive. I, I've said I've said where he said last month. When, when I was an I've said I've said where. Okay. I remember me and Mr. Lock one time we left there and Mr. Lock had to open the door and come out with him. It was about this big with the crawler and the when they got through with us. Yeah, no, I just, and I'm all about getting home with somebody if they're not doing what they're supposed to. Yeah. I just, I felt so bad for them. I know, I know. It just, it makes it nervous anyway, and then, yeah. Yeah. When well, he's already nervous. Yeah. And I appreciate your, your uh, sympathies, your sensibilities to that as well. Anything else? No. My two, my two things go together. I'm controlling code enforcement. Uh, you've had an opportunity to look, and, and I think that my, my, Bottom line thing was that uh, wherever we are with those ordinances, I don't want to have to, when it's the same violator, I don't want to, have to start over on page one every time. If you, if, if, if every three months we have to start over with that letter and the next letter and the second letter and wait 30 days, we're almost time for the next violation to be in place. Uh, can we do that with what we got or do you need to modify some things in that? It would be better to rewrite out almost like to adopt what we have in months now over here. It's kind of lengthy. Um, but it's got a, some procedures in there, so you don't want to start it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like code enforcement, how we handle that. Mm -hmm. um, and the same thing, and just speaking of code enforcement, I guess I can take these internally, but, yeah. but I would like to, to modify the animal control ordinance. I would like for code enforcement, I've talked with Matt Fuqua with the county, just to touch on both of those for you. And I don't know if y'all are aware, the county's talking, okay, so you know what they're we're open. We're open. Yeah, we want to do that, or we would like to be interlocal with them or something. Well, that's what we, we thought there was an interlocal agreement, and we couldn't find one. Mr. Goodman, he said he didn't recall if there had ever been one because she didn't have a paper copy. And Vernon, they already do animal control and, mm -hmm. and code enforcement in Vernon well, for nothing. I don't know about it. I didn't know about mm -hmm. code enforcement. Yes, but they've been doing animal control a few years ago. There was a proposal that ran all the cities and we could sign on for so much money. Right. And, and walk off that because because our problem was always serious at the time, but it wasn't wise. It wasn't many times a year, so it was more comfortable with the court. 
the comprehensive plan code for them, uh, Chica has its own plan and its own board and its own comprehensive plan. The other municipalities, the other four municipalities, are under the Washington County Planning and Zoning Committee and things like that. Uh, now, code enforcement. When they know all they never Code enforcement has kind of been off and on. Mm -hmm. They now have a code enforcement officer, but in the past, it's kind of been hit and missed off and on. And well, see, that's the trouble. And you have to make sure that we don't have to do it. You know, mm -hmm. whatever. But uh, how would we, how would we, if we do it here, how are we going to do it? Uh, it's the person, I know the person is one of the only things in terms of that form and things like that, but do we need a committee that turns in addresses or do we, how's, how's that going to be? My understanding is that they're going to handle the whole thing once it becomes countywide. That's what Mr. Fuquay was telling me just yesterday. You know, I don't know. You know I'm moving off the slow, but I just don't know what the answer is. It's back on the agenda for next week's meeting. Before the county, mm -hmm. and and we uh, <laughs> it was again, that last again when you when you travel see some things they are in the larger the municipalities and the more urban the counties and things like that code enforcement don't sit in the office and wait for somebody to call them and tell them you got a code violation code enforcement is actually out and they try to pass the same things we do uh, as a matter of fact in your nine one one ordinance and in your code what are you getting your code enforcement for the county. There was a place there that said that, that county employees and whatever like that, we saw code enforcement, we supposed to, a code violation, we supposed to turn it in. Well, that works as good as it works, or it don't work at all if you've got a commissioner sitting there. Well, he didn't go. He, he tinkers on that if you want to see or something like that. Yeah, that was all huh? that. Yeah, all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the, there's some places in the wall that are just absolutely needs to be. And, uh, and, uh, and with us just put a full lane down here trying to draw business in here, if I if I had a dollar store or something, I wouldn't have said it next door to some, mm -hmm. to some places. So you, what, 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 what's our answer there? Do, you, do, do we, if we don't have a good orders, do we want Mr. Carter to, to, to get us good orders? I, I don't know what Blunt's down would say is. I, you could get us copies of it or you could find me something to, uh, I mean, I can, I can pull it up for you and email it to you if y'all like to have individual copies or I can send it to Ms. Margaret so you can disperse that all of you. I don't know, but I don't think you all do an email, all of you. Um, yeah, I bet Ms. Carter does. She needs paper copies of it. Yeah. 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 Just send it more with a letter. Like could you, could you, I mean, you, you won't be here next month. Would, would from now until June give you time to have two good ordinances together and when you come back because I don't want to do this next month and make sure you're answering questions. I don't want to oh, sure. Yes, sir. I know you can tell us what you what he said. But I'd rather him be here to tell us and if we have questions ask. And by the end what the county's gonna do with no we'll have for readings. Yeah. And sure. That sure. Yeah. yeah. If we can just see that they that we're gonna reach an end out here someplace, I don't I don't want to ever time us Next, next week or next month or something, but if y'all been having specific trouble like this since the last time I was here, most of four weeks? We've had at least one animal mm -hmm. uh, issue, and and, and, I'm, and the reason I'm asking is that this, the neighbor had an animal issue uh, before, and the animal owner or the homeowner that was the problem passed. And and now the son lives in the home and is it the same animal or same animal same animal and so because he's a new owner and he's a, he's a son but i'm going to start over with, with that dog uh, the only person but that's the same dog i'm going to have to start over here and would you hear mr cruz talk to us a couple of times there's ordinance and animals and things Sheriff's Department. We say we, we, we can't. We can't say call the Sheriff's Department. You might want to it because until they start biting or killing sheep or something like that, they're not a vicious animal. And can I can, I can I address that just a second? Yeah, it's not my enforcement issue. Yeah, please do. It's something near to my heart. That said, you know, since I live in Walsall, I walk around. I'm, I'm yeah. complaining of a lot of the stuff. But um, yeah. what we're using is the County Animal Ordinance uh, 2011-4. Uh, that's the one that I've got my guys out there issuing out. And they're actually issuing citations. Uh, the county has outlined um, 
what a nuisance animal is and actually the penalties for it. First one is a warning, $25 fine, $75 fine, $125 fine, and then a notice to appear for court. I spoke to Judge Peel, and if he gets to that point, he doesn't know what he's going to do with that. Um, we've only got one so far that's actually went to the second one where he wrote them a citation. Um, but we're using that. I, you know, here in Mulsa, we've used it several times. Here, you know, it's, it's being used as an actual, but that's for excessive barking. That's for the dog that's chasing the neighbor's chicken. This is for a little bit of everything. It's a, uh, we get to have anyone challenge us on it, you know, like they would a traffic ticket. But so far, it, it, it's worked. It's been, sheriff's happy with it, people in the community are happy with it, and so so far, so good. So it's it's working, I believe. Your distinction between vicious and, and uh, nuisance. And, and, and we're talking about the nuisance. We're talking about a dog that goes into the neighbors for the bathroom. And so this this covered as well. Gets up on the car. Thanks for some purpose. I can, I can, I can, I can oh, have no. a smart oh, no. a, a copy of that. Um, I said, I have a copy in my office that I give to the deputies, and I can actually give that to you. And how we all want to, we just enforce it at you know, the sheriff's office. But if that's something you want to look at, I mean, you can give me a copy of it. Um, it's something we've had for a while, but we just never really use it until situation arrives. And dogs have personal experience in Los Angeles. Yeah. 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 I mean, after running and getting it on the hill. Yeah. Yes. I got a little bit on that street. Yeah, he got it. He got it. He rides out. He rides out of the back street. I think one of the things, and this is to the council, the people are hard work. I think one of the things at the beginning uh, frustrated me more is, is adopting the, adopting the, the We've probably adopted two or three ordinances in the last two or four years, and we don't seem to be able to enforce any of them, or, or something's not happening. Mm -hmm. And and I think something has to happen for the message to get out to everybody. Something has to happen once. Something has to happen that first. Um, if our ordinance isn't good, let's get a good ordinance, and um, and and then teach us how to enforce it. Or, somebody from your department come and teach us how to enforce it or some things like that. Yes. Uh, I think the people who are being uh, abused or victimized, or whatever the right word be, is uh, they deserve something from us because they're doing the right thing, they're complaining to us. And uh, so we need to respond. Would you like me to bring this part of your copy of that so you can, you can look at it and see if you it's something you want? I can pull it up on you. Okay. Okay, if you would, and, 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 and you may want to measure. Well, it's very similar to what you described. I hadn't read it. You're talking about the county ordinance. Yeah, that sounds very similar to what we have over in Brunstown. Uh, the reason I thought about it was just reading it yesterday. I think Mr. Gooden did our last one, and he was thorough, I thought, and, and, and told him was. When, when you, if, if there's a mesh somewhere, there's something you put to pick and choose and put together the one that's iron clad. Yes, sir. Yes, well, I hope there's if there's such things as iron Okay. The last thing that I want to talk to us about is, and this is just to put a, a thought in our in our heads. Among grants, there's some uh, I don't know what it's called the art, yeah, arts yeah. and duplications and things like that. If any of you ever been to uh, uh, Lake Hatchet, I know we've got a couple in chief, and I don't know who, who did that. I mean, we should have asked uh, uh, Ted a while ago about this, or maybe go to Karen or something, but there's murals all over that town. And one of the prettiest places, and, and, and our $4 booth is getting all about it. On the side of one of our grocery stores, that's a, that's a cattle drive from back in the early part of the, of the century, of the, of the, of the last century. Uh, there's people who like the first postmaster, and uh, uh, if any of you have ever heard of Richard Archibald, he was a explorer, adventurer, uh, <coughs> may have been a spy, he done some things all around the world. He had a he had a piece of property down there. Uh, it's called the Archibald Experimental Station. Uh, there's deer and panther and the things that's native to Florida. But, and, and he kept that place just for the screw J or something like that. And they hundreds of acres there down They did, they had scientists come in did, and did, and there's a mural for his contributions. And uh, how this, the, the guy that started the Lake Station was, was Dr. Melville Dewey, who invented the Dewey Decimal System for libraries. And just a whole, there's a whole bunch of things down there. We don't have buildings so much as we don't. But somebody would probably let us put something in their yard uh, on a piece of plywood or something. <laughs> but 
that, that's one of the most interesting thing. And uh, I just wonder if we would be interested in some time or another pursuing this. Again, we may want to wait on anything we do now until we see where the roads want to go and what's going to do to us. But this is one of the most amazing we looked at. And and in your home, they don't have they don't have and they don't want to walk. They don't have and they don't have to want some other things in there. The biggest chain store kind of thing that we call the big company, they got a Win Dixon and a Golden Corral. And that's one of the busiest places that you've ever, ever seen now. It's one of the most beautiful places that you've ever seen too. And, uh, yeah, yeah. If, if anyone gets up to Chipley tomorrow, they are putting a mural on the side of the people that we believe in Chipley right now. Oh, I saw the I saw the outline. So they started painting it today. Oh. So if the painter was up there. He might go up there and talk to them. Yeah. What's it going to be about? Well, they they have several things. Um, I've only seen it as I've driven past it, so I can't say that I, I was going to go take pictures of it tomorrow. What do you look like a gallery? With a plow, maybe. With a plow. plow. Oh, plow. I've seen them somewhere else. I think the other one's a depot. Pardon? On one no, side of the depot, I think. Okay. In the spring. The plow. Yeah. Dover's got some of them. It, it was on uh, South Oaks and part of the Main Street, maybe. Uh, but I think in the community, so I think that's on uh, here in Ravelin and one of those I've seen. You know, FRM or that's the, the uh, home shop. Was the first one we had in Chipley. There's probably a few buildings in Chipley that are still there. Bailey's has got a big white wall there. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. The court has to probably do new. I have the other. Yeah. But uh, you, you don't know who the building is, do you? I'm sorry. You don't know who the painter is, do you? Who the painter Who's the painter? The painter. I know that's what I'm saying. That, that's, they, they hadn't been there, and when I came by, one point today there was someone there before it was just outlines on the wall but today there was someone working on it okay. it's beautiful I, if it's something we can do make our town attractive to go along with the things you mentioned a while ago and mark said we do still have a roof skid steady that's got we need to clean up 77 first yeah and get yeah. more it would be so good if we had a, if, if we, I, I like town squares, the places I travel is about town square, I love town squares, uh, sometimes they've got a monument, sometimes the courthouse is still there, and something like that, a fountain or something like that, if we had something to make our place more attractive, we may, we may attract more attractive businesses and mm -hmm. businesses and things like that. Okay, anybody have anything, or you have anything for us tonight? I got one more. Okay. I just thought about we're having some problems back here with our shrubberies, and I, I'm going to talk to Officer Stanley before he leaves. But we're having people coming in at night, all all times of the night, sitting in our shrubbery using the Wi-Fi from the library. We have, I understand we're having some problems inside the fence here of the house that DOT owns right here. But if we could just get some extra patrols down this alley, and we're I understand we're also having some, not problems at our shop area, but people loitering around. You know, we haven't missed anything, but. No problem. I'll we'll make that happen tomorrow morning. All right. I don't, I don't think we care from using the Wi-Fi, but sitting in the car outside in the parking lot. Yes. Well, this morning we picked up uh, beer cans and everything else for the set of shrubs that your Wi-Fi. Yeah, that would be a dress for thing. We had, we had that problem with our church for a while, and some church said, that was good. We may get them on the inside the church after a while. One day. Until, <laughs> until I go up one day and here come three teenage girls. They lay down on our sidewalk and sunbathing and doing the, I said, oh, oh, angle work. <laughs> angle work. And, and they didn't know any better probably. I mean, they didn't, wasn't doing that maliciously, but we explained to them what had happened. They came back later. I don't care to use it, but there's a way to use it. Okay, we sat down. Yeah, I don't know.